Hey guys, uh, so I'm going to be doing an offline session for you guys today and I wanted to show my face uh, just to thank you guys for your patience, um, for your support, for your love, uh, for your prayers. You guys have been so sweet. I've had a really, really rough time finding a more consistent like health regimen to stick to. Um, it is very, very difficult managing um, chronic pain and any severe problems that anyone might come across. It, it's hard to predict how you're going to be, how you're going to stick to a regimen, how you're going to, you know, fare. And it's been so difficult just fighting all of that at the same time as teaching. And I thought it was time for me to take a break for myself and focus on myself. And um, I hope I don't need another one. Uh, I'm doing it offline today because I'm kind of pacing myself, see how I how I do, how my mind does, how I feel, um, and if I make a mistake, I don't have to feel like I'm watched by like 200 viewers, <laughs> uh, which I, which I'm so used to. I've been doing this for years, but for some reason, a three week break wasn't enough, and I I came back to class and I was in a lot of pain, and I don't want to describe it because it's just you know the details aren't important, but. It was really, really hard for me to, uh, I looked at the wall of the critique community and I just said, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do, I can't teach and be in pain. Like it's just not, it's, it's, they're not built together. It's not the same part of my brain. One wants me to rest and not think. One is all about thinking and problem solving and analyzing and breaking things down and being patient and articulating my thoughts as, as, as clearly as possible while staying in the spectrum of a student's thinking pro process. and keeping words familiar to them, concepts and ideas familiar to them, familiar to them, and it was really, really hard uh, to do all that and uh, be in pain, and I guess I wasn't ready to go back. I, mean, I don't think I am. I'm going to try to do as many classes as I can offline for you guys and uh, work from there. Hopefully, we can run some live sessions soon. I just want to keep the classes consistent at two sessions a, a, a week um, until I, you know, and then just do my thing, try to keep them at two, Tuesdays and Thursdays still. But I, I love the, the live class uh, concept because it felt like a real active class. It felt like I really was in a classroom environment with my students, which I liked. Um, but I'm going to get started on today's critiques. It's going to be very general miscellaneous pieces. And then I will try my absolute best to make Thursday's class live uh, for the integrated uh Creature Environment Integration Challenges for the Creepy Creature Challenge and the Pole Vaulting Environment Challenge. I'm going to try to be present for those uh, for the live streams. And um, if, I'm, if not, it will just be an offline session, I promise. I'll, I'll get to it. Um, so sorry for my tired voice. I could barely just pull myself together today. I'm so tired all together. But I'm not tired in my mind and I'm not tired for art. I feel like I've rested in that way because I haven't done much art in the last two weeks. I haven't done any teaching at all. Um, lots of league. <laughs> Which is a good thing. Because <laughs> I've kind of just, um, I've kind of let that major part of my brain shut down for a little bit. And being back, I feel like it's stronger, it's more responsive. I don't get lost in my sentences like I used to. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I was getting lost in my sentences a lot feeling a little, you know, tired, um, but I will be more strict with supplements, making sure that I keep myself alert, trying to get as much sleep as possible, um, keeping league like a good two hours away from bedtime so I don't sleep with the rage of war burning in my eyes. Um, and uh, yeah, so thank you all for your support and all of that. I, I really, really appreciate it. I'm going to close the thing now. <laughs> Okay. All right, bye. Okay, dokie. Start recording. Okay. Um so I wanted to take take a look at um some gesture problems here. So this is supposed to be let's just follow the storyline because remember writing is all about building the character before you even have to draw them. If you're trying to build a character while you're drawing them, you're going to make lots of mistakes. Mistakes like this. Uh, where she's pretty much slouchy, she's just there flirting with the commander, she's going through the motions, she does not feel like she's happy to do her job. She feels like she's just a secretary who was expected to salute. I'm not convinced that she's a hard worker, that she's the type A personality. This is all symmetrical, all type A personality. Also a, um, a love interest possibly because of her body type and her 
you know, just her general prettiness is making her an idea of like a, a person of interest romantically. So we have person of interest romantically and type A personality, possibly a, a follower, not necessarily a leader, but a very, very organized person. So all of those point to a more strong spinal structure gesture. It, it, what you have here is a little bit too slouchy. So how do we figure that out? So I'm going to try to do this without Portrait Studio, but I'll try to open up Portrait Studio if I feel like we're not really figuring out perspective properly. So I don't know why she would be looking to the side. That's, that's something of a distraction. So when someone salutes, they look forward perfectly. They try not to make eye contact with their commander, commanding officer or whatever. Um, and if they do make eye contact, it's either to speak or, or when they're directly addressed. But she seems like she's not really taking her position seriously. So between the button line, the tie, and all the way to the distortion of the far side in the three-quarter view of her body, I'm trying to create a line, an outward C-shape that will strengthen her spine a little bit. And if her arm is tucked in, unless her arm is massive, it would also be reinforcing that outward C-shape. So one big outward C-shape. Look how large my brush is. And I'm just moving out. All right, then you have this negative space here in between not really doing anything. It was just a little bit too chunky a sleeve. So writing answers a lot of the questions for you, and that's why writing has become one of the more mandatory things in any curriculum I, I follow up, even in Patreon, because I expect that the student knows what the heck they're talking about. And if you guys are just out there putting colors together, putting shapes together, and hoping you move people, that's not going to happen. People who Writers move people. And when writers can bring their images to life, that's when they become painters and artists. It doesn't really work the other way around. Something made you want to start drawing, and it was your desire to show the story that was going on in your mind. I remember that's why I started drawing. Or drawing seriously. Now, everybody draws, but those who draw seriously, those who take it very seriously, those who can't live without drawing, or those who can't live without telling a story. So something as simple as this little illustration here has changed in such immense ways just by writing a simple story about the character. Now, if you weren't a writer, let's look at it like backwards. If you weren't a writer, if you weren't writing, then again, it reads as this unimportant character, a character that does not reflect the gesture. So the thing that you could have done to save it if you were just writing, if you were just making really, really basic character design, then remove the salute. She's What is she saluting? Who is her superior? She seems to be happy to do it. She doesn't seem like she's just following protocol, like um, curtsying in front of the visiting queen or something like that. She's actually very happy. And I think you wrote it, Analyst Sayuri Haruka. So, yeah, she seems like she's part of an organization. So this is her job. And by use of the side of the thigh, moving all the way up into the side of the torso, there's a cube, there's a detectable z-axis movement away, and that means that that's this corner and this corner, all kind of revealing that cube. You can see it now. You can't leave those there in that immense um, kind of like angle. But you can kind of hint at it. See that? Now we do have the side of the cube here and here. There's something in my eye. <laughs> okay. So I'm so sorry about the whole life situation. I'm not really sure what it is that's going on health-wise, and I can't pursue any medical attention because I live in the United States, so go fuck yourself, and I can't get any, you know, decent health care without burning a hole, a massive crater in my in my bank account. And so I, I don't feel like it's justified because my episodes are few and far between and it's a it's a disc that can't operate on it without paralyzing me. So it's pretty much a, cl a, cl a closed case. But sometimes other symptoms wake up and I, I wonder, you know, if something horrible is going on, if I have cancer or something like that. I want to get checked out. But I, that means I'd have to go back to Canada, and I don't know if you guys know about my personal life, but Canada isn't really where I want to go. Canada is where I ran away from. 
So that's why that's what's really what's been going on for anyone curious. And it's it's definitely become a big deal. Before I used to just brush it off and say I'm just gonna cope with it. I'm gonna deal with it. But now it's affecting my classes. And now that's how I knew it was time for me to take a break and start taking my health a little more seriously because it's affecting my classes and I don't want anything to ever jeopardize what I do here and it's the one thing that's made me happy it's the one thing that's opened the doors to everything it's 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 how I met my most beloved companions in the world including Abu everything happened because I started teaching and I never want, I don't want anything to jeopardize it so trying my best to realign myself and come back to do what I was born to do, which is just this. All right, so this fold here is making absolutely no sense. So again, a, 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 a uniform, which is what she's wearing, a uniform slash blazer slash office thing, it's not really a cardigan. It's A cardigan is a little bit more loosely knit, whereas something that you would wear in a military base or the Pentagon, you would wear a bit more of a stiff fabric for the uh, blazer, which she's wearing right now, the suit. So the way you added more wrinkles, you started telling the story that it is made of a fabric that is a little bit more loose, just kind of like, again, a secretary. A secretary would wear a cardigan. And we're just going by trope stereotypes here. Stereotypes come from an actual source. So um, an analyst who works in an office who's got those little visors and she's got the God knows what else they analyze, numbers and missile plans, I don't know what national security, she would be wearing a, a cardigan. That's all I would say. She'd be wearing a suit, something a little bit more akin to a uniform. So what I'm doing here is trying to show that this is a bit, a bit more of a stiff material, which means it would display more straight lines than kind of bumpy, cheap looking fabric or loose looking fabric. So all these extra bumps where there's a fold or, you know, a crease, um, or like your elbows, yeah, for sure. But the way you've kind of made it look like it's flopping or like a stick-on collar, like the collar has no thickness to it, is sort of what's why it's reading as like a, the thinnest fabric ever, like paper thin. But for it to look bulky, like it's made of like multi-layered fabric that's a bit more warm, you'd have to kind of thicken up the, lo uh, the collar a little bit. All right, as for her smile, I would actually get rid of her smile. She takes her job a little too seriously. Maybe one half smile, one half not. All right, and then you've got this super distance between the nose and mouth, which is making her look a little bit like she's got a child's face. And I know it's anime-based, but when you, when you transfer from anime to realism, the first thing you want to do is remember that you can transfer over a lot of the beauty while still not using a child's face. You don't have to use child proportions to transfer over the beauty. So I'm trying to create a distance between the nose and mouth because that's really what's making her read as a child uh, as well as the nose size. It was very small. She also has a very short face. Yeah, older women and by older women, I don't see, I don't, I don't mean like old women. I mean like twenties, thirties. Have a longer face. That's kind of the, the way you age a woman while preserving her beauty. Just lengthen her face. So a lot of the way you drew this is kind of reading as masculine. Something about it is. I'm just tucking in this cheek. I hate this liquify. I don't know what it is. They've sent out some updates, but you kind of, if anyone knows how to fix this, please let me know. Um, they send out the updates, but they also keep the old Photoshop. Why don't they delete the old one? Because that's why I don't want to update. My SSD is getting really packed, so I don't want to do that. Okay, so what I'm doing again is just trying to mature the face while preserving the beauty. So before, after. Do you see that change in personality? Hmm. <laughs> it's kind of like the sound I would hear with the before. She's kind of too happy. She's just saluting as a joke. 
Um, she's kind of like saluting her friend, you know, like, oh, saluting my friend. She's not really representing her job, her status, her position. And here, it's a little bit more serious. She takes her job seriously. She studied long for it, and she's earned it. Probably goes through a lot. She went through a lot of physical training as well to earn the right to maybe even have a gun. Again, what are we thinking like right now? It may seem excessive to some of you, but that's what a writer does. A writer researches. A writer knows everything about anything they write. They have to learn about it all, or as much as they can, to pull off you know, a believable world. You have to know enough about what you're writing. I'm going to use the smudge tool to completely um, get rid of that extra fold, these extra folds here. And then some of the other issues you're having, I mean, the background isn't really that bright, so I'm not going to get on you for that, but it's kind of a boring setup here. There's not really much of a response to any light, and the background isn't helping, so that's where we would bring in the background as the critique, but just the light inverse. So what I'm going to do now is try to respond to an upward-facing light source of something. Why isn't it giving me my brush? Alright, so darken. And I'm just trying to get the highest point on the torso out. So that would start with the breasts as the highest peak, and then everything below that would be in shadow. And I'm I'm sculpting now. I'm I'm so zoomed out that I don't care who she is or what she is. Now my writer has been turned off. Now the sculptor comes in. All right, and that's what you guys need to do. And of course, a sculptor is also required to know what it is they're drawing, so it's not like a, a way to say that sculptors aren't artists, but you know, you're just mathematically putting things together and problem solving. You're not really worried about writing anymore. It's about making it believable. The writing is done, now make the audience believe it with some form studies. So I'm lifting the upper part of the torso and um, I'm trying to show this sweater is a little bit more bulky. And then her face seems to be responding to some kind of light source. I can't tell where. Hair is completely flat. He needs to really work on that. And I'm just going to fix the way, select, fix the way the uh, kind of rounds off. So I'm not going to touch the corner. The corner's still there. It's still working as the Z axis. But I have to round it off to around the thighs. Okay. So let's take a look at the before and after. You have a lot of issues here. It's very flat values. The background could be brighter or darker. I, I can't really tell. You have a massive cast shadow. It's super sharp, but you have no other like strength, strong lights responding to the light source in any way on any material. So from skin to fabric. All right. So she's looking a little dorky, a little slouchy. Desk job secretary saluting as a joke. Or right here, this is she's not taking it as a joke. strong cast shadow, but you have almost no neck shadow. You have really, really soft facial shadows. Nothing is really consistent in your lighting. Um, so before you, you know, go on to your next illustration, try to uh, think about a little bit, you know, where you are with your writing skills, where you are with your drafting. If this was fan art, for an anime and you transferred it from anime to realism, wasn't the character already written for you? Don't you know what the character is all about? So you want to reflect the character, maybe even exaggerate their characteristics for fan art because you're celebrating the character and the writing behind them. See how flat the uh, cardigan wrapped around the skirt? Now it's actually wrapping. 
instead of a flat picture cut out facing forward at the camera now she, her body's facing to the far right I would darken her feet going up um, that's just because the feet when you're doing a full standing character to illustration you just want to draw attention away from it unless it's like a a fully dressed in black character and they only have sparkly purple uh, pumps or something on or some kind of heel then you want to attract attention there if it's a character that fights more with their legs um, if it's a character that's known for their leg strength then you would again do whatever you need to do for that but this is just a very very basic body build so <clears throat> I would suggest throwing in some gradual shadow moving down drawing attention away from the legs because you have that white against two black heel tips also very sharp it's just uh, drawing attention away this is where everything is happening um, and then finally I invite you to try a bit more contrast your contrast is safe for a student but uh, if you want to push into something a little bit and you have a lot of issues with gesture right now so I wouldn't say you're ready for the next step or that contrast is a good movement forward for you but you might need to have a little bit more contrast on her again it's hard to tell what I want to do with the background darker might be better if it's a darker room darker room with spotlight on it situation room of some kind Okay, so try to find the best light environment for the soft shadows you've chosen and just completely get rid of this uh, cast shadow because it's not doing you much. <clears throat> okay. I'm just getting rid of it now. Okay, I'll try that again. Okay. I don't know how to fix that. Let me see. <laughs> it's just that little space. I want to fill it up. Okay. But after. Let's move on. Alright, so this is another fan art for World of Warcraft. But you used a reference from some fa like fashion shoot. And uh, then you just dressed it up in World of Warcraft character anatomy. Like, that's it. This is not fan art. I wouldn't call this fan art. Again, you're not celebrating what the characters are all about. If you're trying to create like a princessy version of, of the ogres in World of Warcraft, the females in that world are, are warriors. So if there is a warrior, she'd be a warrior princess. And I don't care how many biceps you're going to throw on her or how many, you know, how green her skin is, it's not going to read as a warrior princess. It's just going to read as a princess. That's it. So you really got to ask yourself, is this a study that you tried to make into something relevant for your fan base or are you really trying to celebrate World of Warcraft you're not it was probably started off as a study it probably moved into greens you maybe did intend for it to be a World of Warcraft fan art but you didn't really execute it right in your writing um, if you are an active player you would know that you know the I mean I'm sure you are that the you know ogres are a little bit more I'm not an active player but you know you might have been inclined to celebrate them as warriors that they are very proud warriors so how can you make her look more like a warrior well first of all she can't have that oh my oh my lord little hand gesture on her chest that's just her fanning herself or I don't know what she's doing um, second you might want to show her full body maybe holding some kind of weapon maybe she's just idling an idling warrior so she'll have the stance she'll have the legs kind of creating a v-shaped shoulder with the part to make her look more athletic um, what other facial gestures or facial characteristics might you use to make her look a little bit more like an ogre 
That's like a human with strong features, more like an ogre with ogre features. And as well, give her that weathered, I'm a warrior, I've been fighting since I was six kind of attitude. So first thing I would really do is I like what she's doing with her eyebrows. I like how she's a little bit bored, but you have an asymmetry here. with the way you um, drew the horizontal line for the eye symmetry. And then I'm just going to give her a little bit of sternness and anger. I'm going to get rid of that possible smile and give her an outer kind of strength to her jaw. And we do that by drawing out the lower jaw, the lower lip out so she has more of an underbite and then upper uh, overbite. And that's kind of looking more like a World of Warcraft ogre. I hate what they did with that half ogre girl in World of Warcraft. She looked like she had chiclets stuck in her mouth. They were trying to keep her beautiful, but at the same time giving her the anatomy. It was just really bad design. Really, really bad. Making her green is not all that it takes. So this is kind of the same situation, but as a drawing. Casting was good, because the girl had strong features for the World of Warcraft movie, but um, they could have done a little bit more with her face. Instead of those two little uh, seeds they used as teeth. And I'm going to really weigh brows down. She doesn't really have that brow shape. Go ahead and give her that nose that she needs to be seen as a, you know, an ogre properly. Don't try to humanize too much. Don't be scared. I'm also going to give her a bit of a scowl. So before, not really going in any one direction, the eye was lifted up after a little bit more ogre-like. I mean, one of the ways to give her that kind of heavy brow, kind of like that caveman eyebrow shape, is to um, cast more of a shadow off the forehead, which is technically what the brow being heavy really is. It just means a protruding forehead and a low eyebrow arc. I would thicken the eyebrows a bit more. The bridge isn't that strong, so it's not going to catch a lot of light. Value sharing here. And then you've got the lips, which have these perfect Hollywood lipstick on them. So I would give them more of a smudge. I mean, again, she could be wearing snake blood lipstick, I don't know what, crushed ants. And then, you know, make her lipstick out of it. Lipstick is fine as an addition, but just don't make it makeup guru, perfect line. Okay, so I'm just uh, working on the cupid's bow here. Let me get some of that black that you have. And the gesture is all wrong, so I'm not working with the gesture you have here. As for the kind of green, I would push this green more into yellow. It's still going to read as green, but it's not going to read as more of a, like a cartoony green. Which is kind of where it was before, a little bit too cool. It still looks green. And then depending on your light environment, which is how bright the sun is outside, What's the overcast like, if it's even overcast? We're applying a yellow-white value to bring out some of the moisture in skin material. The eyebrow bones would cast a shadow on the eyelids. It wouldn't really be that exposed. might 
still need some lashes as a female. It's a little less bulky than the other females, maybe a little bit more beautiful than other females. But again, if you're doing fan art, you're celebrating pre-written world. And uh, it doesn't really seem like you're just accessorizing your own studies with a pre-existing character anatomy. That's not fan art. That's accessorizing all, all your own studies with pre-existing character anatomy. <laughs> just being a little more tech technical about it. All right. So my students, when they're referring to anatomy, they're referring to fan art. They know that you know the difference between the two. That's what I want. There's fan art. And then there's duplicating pre-existing anatomy for the sake of the fan base or attention or whatever reasons people do that. Okay, so the gesture's all wrong. I would go for a gesture that's a little bit more dominant. Maybe something that, um, more athletic. But, uh, let me, let me experiment with this. So, Porsche Studio is going to be on sale, actually, Cyber Monday, the 26th to the 30th, so if anyone doesn't have Porsche Studio, you can have it, oh, it looks like there was an update, whoopsie, um, the update might take a little long, so I might not use it this class, but, uh, but yeah, for anyone who needs it, the 26th and the 30th, there's going to be a sale, 20% off Porsche Studio in all the stores, and we are probably a good day away from finally putting up the Porsche Studio for Mac up on the Mac store, we just need a review from... Apple headquarters, they review all products before they go live. Um, and that's all that's between us. There, we have an active Mac version uh, ready for everyone who uses a Mac. Um, so every, thank you to everyone who's bought it, who's supported us. And I hope that the Mac version um, can be out soon. We've gone through so many crazy hurdles. Uh, Apple really does not make it easy for, for uh, considering that the, the portion they take as well, but they really don't make it easy for developers to do anything. Okay. So I'm just loading it. I want to try a couple of different experimental kind of body types. One that's a little bit more big. And this is what you should be doing when you are building a character. You should be trying to show what they can do with their bodies before you rely on the face to do the work for you. So I'm just going to delete this one. Add a model. Okay, female. And uh, we're already on screen controls. Alright. So Abu has added on screen controls to make it a lot easier because everyone was having issues with um, memorizing. <laughs> That's really what we were having issues with. Everyone just admit it. Uh, we were all having issues memorizing the keys for camera control with the mouse and the keyboard. So instead of us I mean, for those who memorized it, good on you, uh, but I didn't, and I was having issues, so Abu has introduced these little controls for us. So the way she would be kind of uh, standing is a little bit more like this. Let me just zoom out. So let me look at the character again. She's more like tilting her head that way, kind of bored. So bored people tend to tilt their head back, kind of lost in thought. She's also a little bit curious. Her head is kind of like tilted up. She's kind of looking at something. And uh, sometimes when we do that, her body moves a little bit that way. Her neck just moves location. Just slightly. It's not a lot. We're still on working from a joint. And then what I would do with her hands is I would just do... Oopsie. I would just do the... Uh, Typical holding weapon, also Borg. Maybe something more like this. With the wrist going up. This arm is lower, so I would move it lower. This one is hoisted up, so I would raise it. So now we have. kind of a lean in the body, right, so one shoulder higher, but all this is leaning back that way, with the head still technically leaning, 
And then what else are we trying to represent? The twist in the torso. And the twist in everything else, so. Yeah, so I'm gonna do that first. I'll twist this back, I'll twist the head back. And then that pride, and then this, bending forward. Twisting that back. It's kind of looking pretty similar now. To hide controls, all you gotta do is just click on the name and then just hide joints. Show joints for now. So this is what I mean by a more of an athletic stance. You can do a lean where you have something like this and you know, something a little bit more leaning like that. Not sure which leg would be leaning. Um, just depends on how you tilt the hips. So there will be Control Z con um, options added soon for the mannequin. We did have that before; it caused some problems, which is why we took it out just for performance purposes. But we'll probably move this fella back a little bit. Yeah, and then you can control the light by pressing on one. I would choose something a little bit more like that. And so this is something that you could have been doing for your character. And you don't have to give them the, oh my, it's so hot hand gesture. You could have given her a full-on female ogre body type. And one thing that you can do, which is so awesome, oh, I have to show their joints again. So show joints is using the R tool to kind of thicken her up. <laughs> she get thick. Okay, so I'm gonna shorten her and just thick. All right, so let me just test what that looks like from the side. A little thicker, yeah. All right, so Porsche Studio might um, lose picture quality as you move. That goes right back up when you turn on your um, your enhanced lighting. So my enhanced lighting is a little bit off right now because I haven't fixed it so that when I'm running for uh, Portrait Studio as well as OBS. But this should not be happening. Right, a lot of that bounce light uh, issue is from the uh, noise. So occlusion level 3, low resolution, high resolution. Let me just see what I can pull off while running o OBS and recording my screen and opening port Photoshop. Gaussian filter on refresh, real time, reflections, high. Okay, now let's see when we move her. Yeah, it's a little laggy because I'm just pretty much upping all the graphics. But for taking a picture, that's really all I need. I never saved this. Did I save it after the new update? And so it's a little laggy again. But once it cooks the scene, it looks great. And that's really all I care about. Just as long as I have the general direction of all the shadows exactly where they belong. Let's move on. Oh yeah, so let me show you the before. Before. The green was a little bit non-organic. looked a little bit cool. She kind of looks a little bit too friendly. Her face is a little bit too friendly for an ogre. Even when she smiles, she'll have that sternness to her. That's something you have to remember about the character. And if they're already pre-written, you really don't have a lot of writing left to do. For this one, I'm just a little bit confused on the perspective. So she is, the camera is looking down at her. She's tilted her head so her camera angle, her face is perfectly aligned with the camera angle. As if we were level her height looking at her face. As if her twin was looking at her face. But we can see the lily pads behind her moving up. Why is that possible? So what I'm going to do here real quick is... See, the first thing that goes out the window when you take a break is your lasso skills. Okay. So I'm going to save the area, the horizon line that's right beside her. There's a horizon line moving everywhere. 
everywhere there is a horizon line. You assign which horizon line is going to be the one that is in the closest proximity to her, as if it was cutting a, a symmetry line right across, this cross section right across her, her center of gravity. So what that means is that the horizon line directly adjacent to her is where the background started. Right in front of her is where the main ground was. There's no foreground or middle ground right now. It's just the main floor, main object on the stage. And then from then, back is all behind the character, with the face being the kind of point of reference. So what we need to do is flatten all of this behind her so that it makes sense as a perspective. And then you put some kind of environment color. Oh yeah, my Photoshop is lagging like crazy. Portrait Studio is too strong for me. All right. Let's meet the middle. She even looks like she has like a scowl. So Portrait Studio also works now with tablets, uh, tablet pens. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is try to choose an environment color of some kind. Maybe a blue. So there was a critique that was done on this where the hue was changed, and that was great. Um, because the skin is not really representing the same environment as what's being reflected on the surface of the water. So a light environment is almost always easily detectable if there's a body of water nearby that will reveal it. So the body of water here is telling us that it's a very dark, dark environment. It's very murky. There's no light, no sunlight. This is just Ophelia ready to go. So. I'm just uh, bringing some more of that shine back. We lost a lot of her shape in her head. Okay, so the environment behind her I would darken. We've lowered those pieces behind. Then we have darkening the area behind her. Oops. And then it's not just a hue change that's required for a scene like this. It's the amount of shadow in this scene as well. You are missing, so I can't paint in other foliage. I can't paint in what might be back here. It might be a little bit more of the same thing, just moving on, receding into the distance. But if you do grab more lily pads to throw off into the distance, you have to shrink them even more. They, they endure even more compression. So that's something that you can do. But as for what exactly might be hanging around in the scene, what do we look for to fill a scene? Our writing. So you write some more. Write what's happening here. If it is Ophelia from Hamlet, then sh we all know what she's about to do. <laughs> so you could play with that. All right. You can probably show off some dead nests or birds in the background or some kind of distant sunrise or something that depicts death or I don't know, something ridiculous. Or if it's something that is your personal story, you need to find a way to fill this, this area up. It could be some sky. Um, you wouldn't see the sky until right here, probably because this is all ground level. It can be some simple silhouettes from tree barks or twigs or, or root systems or something like that. And then uh, a little bit of light shining through to reveal a silhouette. So you can take it as a silhouette and bring in some really, really dim, bright daylight. Or you can continue with what you're doing, which is this dark, dark environment. And what we need to do for that is darken everything. For this to make sense, we really need softer, darker shadows. And if she has recently been covered in water, then that's going to affect a lot more. 
And then just throwing in this framing here to bring the attention back to the main character. There might be a little bit of light shining from the top down, which would make sense for scenes like this. Usually there's always some kind of spotlight, very soft, kind of glowing around the character. So what we're doing here is creating this haze around them. And then when it comes to brightness caused by water on skin, it gets really bright. So don't mind the dodge tool in its saturation. Just look at what it's doing in the contrast. So that's kind of great little speckling patterns of water all the way around, all the way around the hair. So again, please don't use dodge tool just like this. Only amateurs use dodge tool like this. You don't want to look like an amateur. You're supposed to quickly chase like a chaser. Dodge tool is chased swiftly by sponge and you're supposed to desaturate, bring back that excessive saturation that dodge tool causes. So a lot of shine on the eyelids. And again, this is just a randomization. I'm guessing my way through. I wouldn't try this without a reference, me personally. Water is just too unpredictable in the way it behaves on different surfaces and I won't try to force my visual library to figure that out mathematically. So always look up a reference of what water does and the way it pools around the face. But remember, please remember that it's followed by sponge on desaturate to bring down that really icky, icky, gross saturation. Especially on warm tones, Dodge Tool doesn't really create magic the way it does on cool tones with warm tones. So again, sponge tool and smudge tool, all as a way to dim back what dodge tool is doing. Uh, your value sharing a little bit on the bridges of the nose. There's no cast shadow. Cast shadows are still there. Who is the artist responsible for seeing them? Even if it's a soft environment and a soft light, cast shadows will still be there. That inner corner of the eyes is way too dark. Eyebrows need a bit more smudging. Please always smudge the inner eyebrows. Too much hair for you to try to represent it piece by piece. Good job on the sticky hairs. Um, try to use a smudge tool so that they don't look like, um, like they have their own ground to exist on. You want to just kind of marry them into the scene. Burn tool on shadows to bring the hair down to a more wet dark. So hair gets dark when it's wet. Even blonde hair can look brown when it's wet. It's just the way the hair clumps together and works as an opaque substance or opaque material. Desaturating as much as I can wherever Dodge Tool touched the skin. And this is something interesting you're doing. Um, you're bringing in a cool red for the lips, which is cool. It looks like makeup. It looks a little bit editorial. But I recommend do not darken the lips that much. And you're using these really, really unnatural corners for the lips. You have no value sharing here at all. This needs to be fixed. So value sharing. I mean, there's no radial sharing. I'm so sorry. I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> there's no radial shading here on the corner of the mouth. That needs to happen. If you don't know what radial shading is, did I say radial shading or value sharing? So yeah, what you could do is just brighten the lips up a little bit because the values you're using are a touch too dark and you really, really need to just relax with the lip edge. As you can see, a lot of artists are over-representing the lip edge. I'm not sure why you guys are doing this, but you really, really have it for this lip edge. Like, I don't know why you guys over-draw it. I don't know if you guys don't look at people when they talk or... I guess we don't really look at people's mouths when they talk. We try not to do that. <laughs> we mostly look at eyes, which is why you get away with over-sharpening eyes. Because over-sharpening eyes means that um, you're working with the focus and you're not really getting in trouble for that. So I'm darkening the lower lip down. And then this is kind of, again, representing some kind of life 
existential crisis this young lady is going through. So I'm going to try to humanize her face a little bit with giving her some eye bags. Usually eye bags expand and thicken when the lower eyelid closes. And maybe some quick little wrinkle lines. Not so much because the eyes are open. I mean closed. A little bit of that light shining through under the eyebrow. I'm going to try to find the more natural dark values to use for the corners of her lips to bring them back. That's a bit too dark. You might want to have the mouth open a little bit more like she really is lost in thought. Oops, just need to zoom out. Okay, and then we have the colors that you have everywhere. So this is this is going to be the final hue change. And it doesn't have to be that you are um, kind of washing over a specific color. Just choose the environment color as reflected by the water. Water is really good for that. So we're just throwing this green over everything. The skin, the hair, everything's just getting a little bit of that green. And I'm going to go back to before I did that green. And what am I going to do? Choose the area that is the most complementary to green, which is going to be the lips. And I'm going to bring those back out. And then anywhere where the light is touching cannot be um, taken over by the wash. It will have all the redness it needs from the light source. Okay, so that's color coordination, that's color balance, when everything that is shadow or mid-tone is technically taken over by the wash and anything that is highlight or directly exposed to the light source. Or anything complementary like the lips that you would want to keep, get the excuse to not be as part, as part. So they still technically have wash hint, like hues on them, but not as much as shadows or darker mid-tones. Because what is really relieving those shadows and darker midtones from the color wash? And then what I would invite you to do is some simple ripples on the surface, just so the water doesn't seem like oil. And then I would um, smudge out the background. Probably try to darken the scene a little bit more because there's not much going on in those farther corners and it can just stay like that safely nothing going on in the tones but it seems like things are too visible you're gonna start asking what should I put in the back and then it's gonna be a question of what you do you render you're done rendering now it's just all staging okay um, again you can put in some whatever else might be there fireflies, flies, um, roots in the distance, other kind of foliage in the distance, other stuff that you'd see in a swamp or lily garden. And before, head was very, very short after. Just to zoom down. Before, after, and then zoom in. Well, you don't have much of a resolution really for zooming in. See that brightness in the face? It was like the sun was directly shining at her, but then you had this black tar pool of lily pads that made no sense. So we have to reflect the light environment as is represented by the body of water that reveals it. Bodies of water reveal light environments. Write that back to me in the comment section. <laughs> um, and uh, that's it for today. Thank you everyone for watching. I'm sorry if I sound a little bit tired or unenthusiastic. I really am enthusiastic. I'm, uh, I'm, still, I'm still trying hard to, to, to get better. Um, join me on Patreon if you guys are interested in this month's assignments. Um, uh, for those who have not, for patrons who just signed up who have not been given a Discord invite yet, please make sure that you are getting into the Discord and starting your assignments. Um, I know some of you are there to just support, but for apprentices who want to be given homework, you have to join the Discord group to be given homework. I don't assign homework as a Patreon post. Um, it's all through Discord, and we've already in the half of the month, so you have half a month left to finish.
finish your homework and it's in two parts. Um, for those who want to join and upload their work, I mean it kind of it's really painful linking this part because we know Google Plus is shutting down. Uh, but uh, you can join by clicking on the little Google Plus icon here on my website to join the community. This is community headquarters. If you want anything critiqued, this is where you post it. Please follow the rules. No single form studies posted in the post. I want to see bulk of form studies posted together or one sheet of multiple form studies in it. Um, and uh, no single sketches, no funime or fanime or whatever else, no K-pop, no popular magazine, beauty, no shadow having covers, nothing like that. Try to stick to cast shadows, educational, uh, promote, education promoting reference material. If you do post anything with photo references, please make sure you post the photo. I don't want to keep telling people that and I don't want to ban them either. Um, but I really want you guys to post your photo references. And if it's fan art, please say so, so that, you know, um, we know what you're doing. Maybe post the references of the work you're trying to fan art. Um, that's it. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, uh, the, don't forget about the sale. Uh, starting on the 26th, it's only going to be a week long at 20% off. There's a bigger sale similar to it, 40%. Um, in Christmas time, it's also going to be a week only or less than a week, maybe a weekend. Just right before Christmas for anyone who wants to gift Portrait Studio or any of my brushes to anyone. Um, or just have it for their New Year's resolutions. Portrait Studio is an amazing educational tool. I'll be coming out with some more trailers for it. Um, just to, for any updates, anything that's been changed, for anyone who's interested in owning it, I try to keep trailers updated um, and re representing the latest version of Portrait Studio. Uh, so it will be available for Mac very, very soon. Uh, probably within the next two weeks, hopefully in, just in time for Christmas. Um, thank you all for your support. Thank you for your well wishes. I got so many messages on Instagram after yesterday's uh, stream. I'm sorry that I couldn't make it, but I'll try to make it tomorrow as a live stream. Again, if not, I will try to record it for you guys offline. I can't wait uh, to see what you guys posted. I know some of them are still uh, coming in, but some of those designs are just wicked. They're so awesome. Thank you guys for joining the the, the challenge, it really means a lot that you guys responded to the call to design. Um, and I'll try to have a challenge, um, kind of like itinerary ready for January for our new year. Um, might not, might not have like a Christmas themed one, but I do want to try last year's. Remember guys, do you guys remember last year's, uh, challenge? It was the holiday town. It was a Christmas town. Um, it was really cute because everyone designed their own little Christmassy kind of town thing. So cute, so festive. I might do that. If not, I don't, if I don't do it, do it anyway if you're interested in it and post it. Um, any pre-existing cha challenges that have already been published on the website can be found on the community tab. Or the more popular ones, not all of them, because there's so many of them. But all the, all the popular ones are all available here. Or you can just go into the challenge community, like challenge, community challenge playlist on my, web, um, on my YouTube channel. I put them all up. All the critique hours for any challenge are available there. And uh, I will see you guys hopefully tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I'm happy to be back. Bye, guys.